Heartland FM. Kissing in the Wind uh, on Heartland FM from uh, Travis. Uh, a big day uh, for music released today as uh, the brand new album 10 Songs is out. My guest uh, is Andy Dunlop uh, from Travis. Andy, welcome to Heartland FM. Thank you for having me. Nice to be here. So virtually be virtually be here. Well, yeah, but from from your house, as you can see in the yes, background, yeah. to, to my house, as you can see it in, in, the, in the background as we well. We can compare light fittings. Well, yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's quite nice. I, I quite like that. I mean, I've, got big, I've got the big yeah. plant here. Oh, you're, you're beating me then. I know. Yeah, enough. Uh, I, I, I often sort of ask this to, to artists, but how does it feel on a day like this when the album's actually out? There's been a lot of preparation, but today's the big day. Yes, it's, it's exciting, you know, it's great. It's, it's really nice because you sit in music for so long. And l- luckily with this album, it hasn't been as long as some. I mean, we finished it just in March. So that's quite a quick turnaround fee compared to some albums. I mean, some we sat on for like a year almost. Well, everything gets in place. So and that's always really frustrating because you've got this music and you're really excited about it. And you, can't, you can only play it to like really close friends or family and things. So it's it's really nice just to know that it's going out there today and people will be able to listen to it. And, and it'll become part of people's lives rather than just part of our lives so uh, how was it you say finished it in march so w- was this all done kind of kind of pre-lockdown because that must be just a... yeah literally just we, we we did it was done in two sessions down in london in rack studios we did one in november and then we sort of had about half the record done then and then we reconvened in february and we literally based on i think i got back home march 14th 15th or something so it literally was just before and then fran had to basically because he's an early now so he had to fly out quickly to get home and everything because it was suddenly it all because it, it all came very quick once it started sort of you know this, this, these things started coming wasn't it so it was like came like right. so luckily we we just got it finished uh, I, I, you must be quite sort of, in a way, quite pleased at that because it may have been a different product if you had to do it. Yeah, in no, nothing. Yeah, nothing. Nothing beats standing in a room with with your your band members, with fellow musicians. Uh, there's a there's an energy there that you know. I mean, we could have made it without being in the same room together to but i think that it would be compromised if you had to do that mm. and we'd be you know we'd be doing things over lockdown you know be putting things together and everything and it's nice and it's fun and it's a challenge but it doesn't beat just standing in a room together when you can look at each other and you can play off each other because music is it's a conversation between whether in our case four people and it's a it's a constantly evolving conversation even if you think you know what you're going to do someone will do something and you'll suddenly change the, the track you're going in. so it's i think it's really important for that so uh, we were very lucky that we got it done in time yeah, so ten songs. I'm actually glad there's ten songs on the album. Were you were you at any point uh, attempted to put eleven on it? You know, uh, it's, it's nice. Ten ten songs is just a nice number. I th- I think I've noticed with albums recently, and I know it's probably more to do with like the way digital releases things. And everything, that it's a lot more songs on records, and I find I, I can't listen to them. I can't take in more than about ten songs. Oh, I always remember someone saying that the phone numbers back in the day there were seven numbers because that's what people could remember. You know, so they kept it simple. They kept it at those seven numbers. And I think for albums, ten songs is the amount of songs that people can really take in and sort of, you know enjoy. After that, you start losing. You start forgetting about the songs at the start when you're listening mm. to the songs at the end. And everything. so yeah, I, I've always found that my favorite records were around ten songs. I mean, for me, for me, growing up as a rock kid, Back in Black was a template, and that's 10 songs. So if it's good enough for AC, it's good enough for me. 10 it is then. Uh, Was there a difficult selection process in that? I mean, was there many, many more songs that, Uh, that could have made it? Oh, where it's great with like with with Fran, you know, who does the writing of the songs, where it's great with him is he uh, monitors himself. He's his own worst sort of critic. So he will only bring to this, you know, he will only bring the the best songs to you. I mean, he writes 100. But he brings you ten, and the ten songs he brings are the, the best ones. And it's, you know, you, you know that when they come there. So there's no, there's never any of that selection process really. It's, it's a more a process of right. Okay, how can we make this song the best it can possibly be now? And um, is that kind of a journey? Is it a story journey? Is it a musical journey? How how, how would you describe um, the album? No, I mean it's it's it's, it's a no, it's not not a journey. I mean it's a musical journey. Obviously, every album is. But it's not a journey as in such a that there's a thread running through it. It's just but any album that's personal and written in personal space from where you are at that time will be cohesive, I think. And I think for this record especially, it's our most cohesive record since The Man Who really is. It stands as a body of work really, really solidly rather than just a collection of songs. And, and there's no sort of rhyme or reason to that sometimes. Sometimes you just do it and then you, when you put them together, you're like, that, oh, yeah, this is really, really works really well as a record so and luckily this one really does as i say i think it's it's my favorite as in sort of like a whole album since the man who so uh favorite tracks is, is that difficult if you say it's your favorite album is yeah. it difficult to even narrow it down to it's, they're, 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 still so, they're still so fresh at the moment it's, it's yeah. difficult but 
I think that for me, the, 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 the two songs for me that define at the moment are the quietest song on the record and the loudest song on the record. So that's there's a song called uh, All Fall Down, which is yeah. really, really quiet, really delicate and really nice. Super, you know, it's like, like super sweet, a bit, it's like it's got a, it's a bitterness to it as well. And then the loudest song on the record is a song called Valentine, which is like, like an all out squealing guitars and shouting and just everything everything thrown in there. So those two points in the record to me are my favourite at the moment because they're the, the polar ends of the record. Yeah, and uh, of course the collaboration with uh, Susanna Hoffs on, on the new song. How did, how did that come about? Oh, it's, it's funny because um, I still haven't met Susanna yet. The, the band hasn't met because we. <laughs> Fran, he, he, he struck up a conversation over Twitter with Susanna. So he'd done something, like I think it was a, a version of the Eternal Flame with, with, with the band recently. And he'd sort of put a message on just saying, this is amazing, you know, sounds great. you know. You sort of, and she'd got back into them and he was like, oh my God, Susanna Hoffs has got back. A couple of, a conversation there. So they, they had a sort of a, a bit of a rapport. And when they wrote this song, he just knew that her voice would be the perfect voice. For, you know, there was never sort of like, oh, we'll look through sort of a few different singers. It was like, no. This is this has to be so uh, you know, they asked her, and luckily she said yes to it. So he recorded her before we went in to do the album version. You know, he had her vocals so we could play along to them. And then I thought, oh, well, at least we'll get to meet her when we're doing the video, you know, because I mean, I, I love the Bangles, I still yeah. love the Bangles, grew up, you know, listening to their music. And then um, so I thought, oh, you know, the video will be the point I'll get to meet her. And then obviously all this happens, and we had to do like this strange, like isolated video, so you know, which became part of the narrative of the video, so it, it worked for that sense, but um, it didn't work in the sense that I didn't get to meet one of my idols. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe someday. Maybe someday. I'm sure, I'm sure once this is all over, we'll hopefully get to meet her, because I would love that. She's, I mean, it's amazing listening to her voice, because mm. it's funny, because it's, our, you know, our record, but her voice is on it, so it's, it feels like someone else's record you're listening to almost, yeah. which is really nice, and her voice Oh, good. It's still, it's still, it's got, still got all the same characteristics that it always had, you know. So it's so nice. So the the, the video for that is, is it? Are you guys on a rooftop somewhere? Or, or can mm. I just have a, Fran's a, on a rooftop. Yeah, yeah. Fran's on a rooftop. It's, it's in LA. Yeah. yeah Susanna's in, in, a, in a car park in LA. I think it was. And me, Dougie, and Neil are in the Theatre Royal in Glasgow. Right. Okay. Um, it pulls so, up at the end, and it's like there's a theatre behind us. But it's oh, all no, yeah. Black yeah, 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 yeah. So, so well, what, what's what's the deal with the with the with, with the red boiler suit? That seems to be a, a, a bit of a theme for, for you guys at the moment. Oh, yeah, no, it's it's, 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 Franz, it's Franz outfit at the moment, and it's, it's great because it's, it's it's such a like identifiable thing, you know. And I think when he wears it on stage, he's worn it on stage a couple of times, and you can it's just, he stands out, you know. It really yeah. does, you know. So you can, you know, because people are looking, you're always looking for who's singing the songs. You know, yeah, you sort of are aware of that. So it's, it's like, oh, that's the guy. That's and it's really nice. It's an, an effective sort of tool, almost to sort of. Yeah. It's it's almost as it looks great as well, but it's almost a utilitarian thing. It's like sort of like okay, here here we are, you know. He's definitely rocking the red boiler suit. Definitely, oh, yeah, yeah. definitely doing that. Uh, the artwork on the album uh, sleeve. Yeah. Uh, who designed that? Tell us some. Tell us. Tell us a bit about that. Well, that's Fran. Again, Fran did the, 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 the artwork and it's like the, the, the denim jacket and there's badges there that are that to represent the sort of key songs in the record. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, I think, hopefully, I think they're, they're making those badges as well so we can actually sort of, you okay. know, people can get the badges so you can wear them. Because I'm a big fan of a badge. I was always, as I say, going back to being a rock kid, you know, it was, it was patches and badges were like, you know, that was your, how you identified yourself. So I, I love the fact, and you haven't seen that so much for years. You don't see badges no. so, so much, you know. So it was a really nice thing to sort of try and sort of bring back this, the spirit of that. Uh, well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll send you one of our radio station badges because we got some, oh, some, some, some uh, as long as you wear it on the Glasgow Lego of, of the tour, okay? Of course, definitely. It's a deal. Oh, it's definitely oh, a deal. Well, what's that coming out the pocket uh, of the of, of the album sleeve? It's the little white thing with two with two dots on it. It's a ghost. On. Yeah, it's a ghost. It's a ghost. I've, yes, yes. I've, 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 the penny, yeah. the penny has just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the penny has just so is it a Pokemon ghost or just ghost from the video? No, just, it's just a ghost from the video, yeah. Okay, but okay. It's, it's, it kind of it, it looks a little bit like the little, little Pac Man ghost, it's got yeah, that yeah, sort that's of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, so, uh, great stuff on that. Loving the, the, the album. Uh, oh, thank you. Touring now. Uh, <sighs> fingers uh, crossed. You guys should have been out doing stuff, and you should have been out know. touring and and all the rest. Uh, I mean, but first of all, how how has that felt during this it's, this year? I've, I've I've missed everything about it. I've, I've missed going to see shows because I love going mm. to see other bands. You know, I like I love music. I love the feeling of community that it gives you a sense of community that you know being in a room with loads of people and saying. And I miss touring dreadfully because I, I miss all the, the all the crowds. I miss 
like I miss the family that we tour with. We've got like an extended family of crew that we always use that you know had hardly seen. I was down in London last week. We were doing some prom promotion, and I saw a few of the crew, and it was lovely because you know these guys. We were all meant to be our family, our extended family was meant to be together this year, traveling, and and there's the camaraderie that's involved in that is really nice, and that's all gone at the moment. And I understand why. I understand mm -hmm. what's going on, and sort of like, but um, I just hope next year that we can get back to it because, as I say, for musicians it's bad, but for the for these people that you for the invisible people behind touring. They're they're finding it really difficult at the moment, and there's no, there's no such there's not been much support for them, and it's it's a really tough time for them because without these people we can't put shows on. I know you, you most people don't see them and don't know what they're doing, and then their talents are invisible, but their talents are extraordinary. They are they are the people that work all day so that we can stand on the stage for just an hour and a half, and mm -hmm. then they work all night taking that down and getting everything back so that we can do the next day. So these people work about fifteen times as hard as we do, and. Yeah, nobody sees them, but they, they, they're the people that we can't do a show without. So I'm really hoping it gets back to it soon because we need these people. Yeah, I mean, I know a couple of guys who uh, who, who who do sound, and one guy particularly who's yeah. who, who's got his own sound company, and he's like yeah. saying, you, you know, what, what what can we do? Because yeah, they, yeah, they, they can't do do gigs in the same way, and, and I think we kind of wish them all all the best and and, and oh, no, their way of of survival uh, yeah. uh, uh, through this. Uh, touring then, um, will we see you in the Royal Concert Hall in Glasgow uh, next May? You, yes, yes, yes. I mean, it's, yes. it's kind, of, kind of a silly question. You're looking forward to it, but you, you, oh, you, you, wait. you must. I, I really can't. I mean, the, the only, I mean, I've, I've been looking for like silver linings through all this, and the only thing is, when we tour, the album will have had time to settle, and people have had to listen to it. And things. Normally, they usually put on a UK tour the week you release an album. And I've always felt that was a bit sort of counterintuitive because it's nice because, you know, it's records and early. that's what you're trying to understand that. But people haven't had time to listen to the record. So you're playing these new songs and it's, it's always just a bit, of, you, 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 I think there's a, a sense of understanding between the crowd and the band that this is the new stuff. But it's always like, oh, you don't know this as well as an OC sing or turn or all these songs that yeah. had years to bid in. So the, the only positive I can find is by that point, people have had time to listen to the new record and those songs will be familiar to them and they can enjoy them hopefully as much as the older ones. It's 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 an interesting way to, to look at it because you're right. New stuff you want to be get out there performing it, but the yeah. the recognition from from the fans and, and that must be a great thing. Uh, I know from, from the back catalogue, you know the, the the big tunes that they want to hear yeah. that. But it, it must be nice engaging with the, the new material. As, it's as brilliant, fans. and it and it gives the old stuff a lease of life as well. I mean, we'll never not play the old stuff. You know, I I, I, I hate going to see bands and they won't play the hits or so. You know, because it's. That's why people come there to see that, you know, and and that's then that's fine, and they totally understand that. But the new stuff kind of gives it, it keeps it us interested. It changes the set around a little bit. It makes it, it, it and it enthuses those old songs. And sometimes, say you put a new song, and then you put like a, it's a right to reach you, which you played a hundred times, you know, a thousand times, and but that new song will suddenly inform right to reach you, and it'll totally change it and give it a new lease of life for us. So yeah, it's exciting. It's, it's an exciting prospect having new stuff. I think my, I've just had a little flashback memory there to my, my, my kind of best old stuff, new stuff heckle uh, was when I saw yeah. Bob Geldof in, in, in concert. <laughs> and the people in the front two rows just wanted to hear, I don't like Mondays. But, yeah, but, yeah. And he said, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And yeah, yeah, yeah. eventually he played it. But uh, I could sense from him there was a, a little bit of frustration there. That he was, I, 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 I don't know if you've heard the old story about Neil Young, but he came on and he played an entirely new album that nobody had heard yet. All right. And the crowd, the crowd were getting really restless and he played the album in its entire that yeah. was the set and it, nobody knew it it hadn't been released and okay you know and at the, end, at the end of it he said right i'm going to take a break but don't worry i'm going to come back and play stuff you all know and they were like yay and he came back on and played a new album again <laughs> <laughs> oh brilliant stuff absolutely <laughs> brilliant uh, so uh, you're looking forward to to uh, to, 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 to the tour oh, be great. Uh, yeah no yeah uh, it's really because I, I know because you've got the social media now, so you've got the connection with fans, and I know they're all missing it dreadfully as well. So, like, because there's a sense of community with them that they all meet up at our gigs, and that's mm -hmm. their sort of extended family, and mm -hmm. that's been taken away from them as well. It's just been such a dreadful time, and as I say, you know, I understand we've got to take these precautions at the moment to. Yeah. And I, and I and I encourage people: please wear masks, please do everything you can so that this lasts as long as short as possible. Yeah, I, that... I don't, you know. So, 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 how have you guys been been doing through it? I mean, I know a lot of people. There's been a lot of talk about, uh, you, you know, as well as feeling physically well, we, we've got to feel mentally well as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think 
I think music does a, a lot to to help us. So have you guys all, all been kind of still interacting with each other and and, and making yeah, sure? Yeah, we've been doing things. You know, as you say, it's not the same as being in the room together. But we've been doing lots of like we've been doing lockdown videos and making tracks and things. You know, it's been it's been fun. It's, it's been a nice challenge. So there's one where we had to pick like an isolated place near us. So I, I, I live in Liverpool, so I went down to uh, the Crosby Beach where they got the, the statues, the Anthony Gormley, and Neil was out in the fells by him, and Fran was out in the desert by him and Ellie, and Dougie went to Loch Lomond, you know, and it was it was it was a nice challenge to do these things. So that was really good. And then every day I just sit in the piano. I'm, I'm sitting behind the piano at the moment, and every day I just sit at the piano and play and you know, through this and it's been an incredibly difficult time for people as it, it's it's funny it's not just the physical act of going out and seeing people it is the mental thing and sometimes i think you don't even realize how much it affects you i was i was, I was telling a friend this the other day i was stood in the kitchen and it was a sunday and i had the radio on and you feel fine. You know, this was in the middle of lockdown, and I felt fine. I felt this, and and the, the the DJ just said something something nice, like you know, oh, you know, I'm thinking of you all, you know, and I care about you all, you know, don't think I don't, and I know this is. And do you know what? I just burst into tears, mm. and, and it was, and it wasn't like you know anything really said. I think it was just I didn't realise quite how fragile my emotions were during the, sort of like the main lockdown, and I don't think people do, and I think this will have a huge effect, and, and I know young people as well, mm. and students that can't be together and things, you know, it's it's, it's incredibly tough on them, because they're missing out on a whole part of this a section of their life. And I think you're right, because the thing about radio, and the thing that I, I always think about radio is whether yeah. I'm doing yeah. stuff from home or whether I'm doing yeah. stuff from, from the studio, you're in a, mm. a box or, or you're in a room at the house. Yeah. You're invited into people's lives, and, yeah, and, yeah. and I never take that as, as a given that uh, no, no, yeah, yeah. You know, people are there. And I think that is the great thing about radio; it's a great communication medium. And you say oh, no, just, definitely just saying a few words that yeah. stuck, that stuck you. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's vital that we have as much love. Oh, no, no, definitely. And I'm, and I'm, I'm lucky, you know. I've got my wife, I've got my son here, and things like that. But like, like so, you know, my mum, who's like, so, you know older, she, I've seen her once. I mean, I talk to her all the time, but I've only seen her once through this, mm. and it's. It's harder. She's on her own, you know, and everything. But you know, but again, she's got to look after herself, and we understand that. But it's it's incredibly difficult on people, especially if you're on your own. I think. Well, can I? So wish... you're, you're 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 there as a voice in your room a lot of the time. You're you you're a comfort, you know. You are a friend. That's. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it's all. And I think we've all made many friends uh, through radio, through through music, and yeah, friends no, no, that, that, that we've never met and may, and may yeah, never. No, exactly. Meet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, Andy, can I wish you and all the other guys, can you can, can you wish them all the very best uh, from the team here at uh, Heartland? Well, thank you. Uh, let's play another track. Oh, by the way, the, the album, we're going to feature his album of the week next week on The Breakfast Show. Oh, bless so, you. So we, thank you very much. So on, on, on the show uh, next week. Uh, Andy, I'll, I'll leave the final choice up to you. What should we play from the brand new album? Oh, Ten songs right, okay. to out today. Um, well, this my favourite at the moment. It's like a really, it's a really, it's the gentlest song in a record. It's a song called "All Fall Down," and it's just it's the most beautiful, exquisite. It's just a really gentle thing, but really melancholy and but up, upbeat as well. So, if you could play "All Fall Down," that would be great. Thanks. Right, we'll do this. Uh, this is Travis and "All Fall Down." Andy Dunlop from Travis, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Heartland. Air.